Um, the first movie I think that made an impression on me was Breakfast at Tiffany's. I was probably eight or nine, and I saw it, and I had already been acting since then, but I think that's really when I realized what it meant to be an actor. I was about five and a half or six is when I first booked. Um, I started, like, I did, like, a couple print jobs when I was a kid in New York, and then when I moved to L.A., I got super blessed and just booked um, Amityville Horror, which was, you know, at a, at a young age, booking a big studio film like that is a big deal. It's a huge feat at that age to be able to cry. And so um, <laughs> I did about four or five auditions, and I just had to cry every single time. It was the same crying scene to prove to everyone that I could cry, and I wasn't turning myself crazy. <laughs> when I found out about Kick-Ass, I was, I was... I think 10 when I found out about it, and then when I booked it, I was 11. It was a month before uh, Wanted to come out with Angelina Jolie, and I was obviously obsessed with Angelina. And, you know, I told my mom, I was like, I want to do something really cool like Angelina, but, like, not super kitty. You know, I don't want to be running around with, like, little laser guns and stupid stuff. And my mom was like, oh, that'll never happen. You're 11. Next thing you know, a couple months later, um, a script comes through, and she's like, Chloe, you're never going to believe this. They're actually making this movie called Kick-Ass, and it literally is an Angelina-type character in an 11 year old girl. Immediately we weren't afraid of it because I know that's not real life and nothing's ever affected me like that and I've never gone home like super depressed or you know doing anything crazy and so she was never afraid of letting me do the movies. Basically I got a call from my agency and they were like look Lauren Scorsese is making a movie and immediately I was like oh my god it's gonna be racy it's gonna be cool it's gonna be like really dark and then they're like well you know it's a movie called Hugo it's a kid it's his first kids film and I was like Oh, okay, and it was kind of caught me off guard. We're only casting local Brits because we want a real accent, we want the whole thing. And I was like, okay, well, you know, I'll do a tape and I'll, you know, audition for it. So I wore a little wig and I did a, everything in a British accent. I introduced myself as Chloe Grace Moretz in a British accent and he loved it. And he flew me and Asa Butterfield, the kid who played Hugo, to um, uh, New York to where his office is to audition for him in front of him. I flew out there, keeping up the act that I was British, that I was a, a British local who moved to LA. And then as I was leaving, I was like, I was like, okay, bye Marty. Cause he was like, call me Marty. And I was like, okay, bye Marty. And then he was like, wait, I'm like, wait, what, where'd your accent go? And I was like, P funny story. I'm not British, <laughs> I lied. To be honest, I feel most comfortable and most confident with myself when I am in front of a camera and on screen. I've learned to watch myself by watching myself in third person. So uh -huh. when I watch a movie of myself or I see pictures of myself, I, I comment as third person, not as, oh, I look good there. So I'll be like, oh, I like that, but that, you know, she could have done better. If I talk about, like, for instance, Carrie, um, I'll be like, oh, you know, Carrie, da, da 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 And I won't be like, oh, when I played Carrie. So I, it's kind of the only way I can watch it and judge myself very harshly. It's pretty cliche, but I like to fly, or I like to breathe underwater, because invisible is kind of terrifying. I don't want to see things that I don't want to see, and I'd rather not be able to have the power to, to walk into awkward situations and know too much. I'm, I'm a big fan of just turning my head and not knowing.